Hello there. Welcome to yet another wonderful day and a wonderful time with me, Bishop Michael Adji, on Daily Words and Prayers. I bless you in the name of the Lord God Almighty, the God that never fails. For he says, call upon me in the day of trouble, I'll answer and deliver thee. I'll even answer thee in the secret place of thunder. I pray over your life that whatever trouble that seemed to have befallen you, receive an answer from God that brings deliverance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God answers you in your cry, in your time of need. God meets your needs. God shows up when you need him the most. I decree it. And I command it so over your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I release the blessings of the heavens upon you, the blessings of the earth, the blessings that be underneath the earth, the blessings of the womb, and the blessings of the breast. All these speaks of nothing but creative blessings and provisional blessings. And more so, such things you have ever desired that your hands cannot reach, God gives them to you, causes them to fall upon you, just as the rain comes from the heavens onto the earth, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Today, by the word of grace and by the mercies of the Lord, I would love for us to consider this truth, the truth about the state of our minds, and how that we must renew our minds. The Lord God for a while had spoken to me that we should look on the matter, mind your mind. The mystery of the mind is overwhelming. For I have come to realize above every other thing that the state of a person's mind determines its external realities. However your mind is, will be reflected upon your physical being. It will be reflected upon your situations and circumstances. For the state of your mind, how you think within you, is crucial to what you become and to everything that happens in your external that's why scripture says we must keep our minds, our hearts, with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. And as he said also in the book of Proverbs 23 verse number 7. For as he thinketh, a man thinketh, a woman thinketh within him, in his heart, in his mind. So is he. It's very evident through scriptures that we are nothing but products of our minds, the state of our minds. That's why it behoves me by the word of the Lord mm -hmm. to talk along these lines. Please, I beg of you, <clears throat> in the name of the Lord, excuse me, mind your mind. Pay attention, a very close attention to the happenings in your mind. Do not be consciously caught up with the external and not consciously caught up with the internal. For the internal is actually the cause of the external. So let's not put the cart before the horse. Rather, let's put the horse before the cart. For it's the horse that will drive the cart wherever it needs to go to. I beg of you in the name of the Lord. Don't pay close attention to your exterior. And no attention at all to your interior. The internal you is of more value, more import than the external you. The more you gain mastery over your mind, 
the more you gain mastery over your life, over circumstances, situations, and the happenings around you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Emotions that are nothing but the manifestation of strange feelings which are akin to man, whether it be positive or negative emotions, whether it be sadness or happiness, anger or joy, it's all tied to the state of the mind. And peradventure, I will look a little into that. But for now, the Lord says, we should renew our minds. And for a text, I love for us to read just one passage of scripture today. And it's found in the book of Romans chapter number 12. Read in verse number 2. Scripture reads, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. What a word. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Today, by the grace of God, I would love for us to look into this matter very critically. And I pray that the Lord will help us mightily in Jesus' mighty name. The renewing of our mind is what will help our transformation. It is the state of your mind that establishes your conformation. <laughs> conformation is nothing but becoming similar, adapting to the things that we see, the place we are, to take upon ourselves a pattern, a format, a mold, to shape up our lives after a certain way and direction. And the Lord says, be not conformed to the world, this world, which means do not pattern your life after the form, the standards, the ways of this world. Do not become like this world. Let not your internal person, your external person, be like this world. And he said, But be ye transformed, be changed in appearance, in structure, in personality, based on the renewing of your mind. So let me come bringing forth this truth. I beg of you, in the name of Jesus, follow closely. The world has a pattern. The world has a style. The world has its own nature. The world has its own shape. The way things are done. How people react to things. How people handle things. The world is full of such. The world is full of forms that men in the world wants you to be akin to, which means they want your life to come into that form. They want to mold you after their own way, pattern, and lifestyle. That is what you talk about when we decree the word or declare the word conformity, conformity, conformation, to conform 
or be conformed. It means to become similar with, in pattern, in shape, in nature, and in character. The Lord says, no, I don't want you to follow that route. But there's another route I want you to follow. And it's in the divine route. It's in the kingdom route, the heavenly route, the Christian route. So for you to know change, experience change in the external, in your nature, in your character, in your form and personality, your mind must come to work. So invariably, we have become what we have become based on our mindset. The way we think, the way we reason, our judgments, our wills, and how we feel, and our emotional expressions, all are based on the way we have always thought along the lines of worldly standards. And the Lord says, no. He said, I want you to be changed. Change. And this change in nature, character, personality, formation, all will come from the change you take that takes place in your mind. So this brings me to what the Lord has always made me to say. The external is only the effect of the internal cause. The internal is the causative thing that establishes the external effect that we see. Which means every man's external reality is a function of his internal positioning. The way you think establishes the way you behave. The way you think establishes your character. It establishes your nature. God says if you want a change in nature, once a change in character, once a change in personality, you have to change first your mind. Work on your mind. Renew your mind. Let's not try to make things happen physically when we've not tried to make them happen internally. Because it will be a fool's effort which will produce absolutely nothing. Whoever wants a change in life, must first look within him, not without. Whether it's in nature, character, disposition, circumstances, and situation, it all begins from within. That's why the word of the Lord says, renew your mind. Where you are, what you have, what you are, is all a product of the present state of your mind. How you think, how you feel, and how you reason and judge matters. If you can change the state of your mind, by that I mean how you think, how you reason, how you judge matters, the will that comes out of all of these, it will definitely change the way your nature, your character, and personality is. Transformation is a great thing. It speaks of change whether gradual or radical it's a change it's a change in appearance it's a change in form it's a change in structure transformation is nothing but the word metamorphosis and today the lord will help me to say that we all need changes in our lives changes for the better whether it's been nature whether it's been character personality or in our worldly pursuits and the things we achieve and attain unto. We need the change for the better. And all these will never come until we change the state of our mind. The word transformation is also the word transmute, which means to change into another, to reconstruct, to remake, remold. It's a total makeover. And all these come about by a renewing of the mind, reworking of the mind, a change in the mind. So I beg of you in the name of the Lord Jesus, let's mind our minds and begin to walk on our minds all over again. And we will see the changes that we ever desire in Jesus' mighty name. 
Who wants something better for life, from life and out of life? That person must look within him and change the belief system, change the positioning of thoughts and change attitudes. And all these are nothing but the product of the mind. So therefore, the more we remain in one state, conformed to one state, fixed on one state, the more our mind has been fixed on that state. If we want this state, the structure, the environment, circumstance in which we live in to change, we must change the state of our minds. Now all these words I have used are nothing but words that have prefixes. Prefixes. The word prefix is nothing but a word before a word. By that I mean that which is fixed, positioned, established before the main word shows up. The word conformed is a compound word, like I will say. It is con and formed. If you put a hyphen between N and F, it means C-O-N, con and formed, S A B F O R O M E D formed. And conformed is from the word conform. The word con means to take in. Form is a shape. Form is pattern. Form is nothing but a mold, a style. That's a form. An ideal, an idea that has been established. So to be conformed, bringing both words together means to take into yourself a particular form, a particular pattern, a particular mold, and walk along those lines. That's what conformity is all about. It means we bring two words to form a word. The word transformed also means a compound word, which means trans and form. The word trans is nothing but that which speaks about movement from one place to another, to go across, go beyond, to leave this level, change in positioning. So the word form is there again, which means shape, pattern, style, mold, or a path. So it means to transform means to move away, to go across, go beyond this very form that we have been conformed to. This very form that we took into ourselves. He said, we move out of it, we change, we go away from it, so that there can be a change in our lives. The word renew also is a prefix, which means walk upon that which has been new. Do not let it remain the way it is. Do something about it. It's like the construction of a broken vessel in the hand of the potter. The potter was making the vessel. It got broken in his hands. And the potter did not just cry. Neither did he begin to live in regret. Neither was he sad and unhappy. Rather, he walked on it again. He renewed it. He remolded it. He reconstructed it. He reformed it. Transformed it. He transformed it into another vessel. He changed it from the broken state to the wonderful, beautiful, amended state. What is God saying, therefore? Wherever you find your life being conformed to that which is not good, the Lord says you can change it, and the change will only begin and take place in your mind. If you can change your mind, you change your nature. If you can change your mind, you change your character. If you can change your mind, you change your lifestyle. It's all about how you handle things in your mind. What's the state of your mind like? Are you in conformity to things that are not good? God says it can be changed. Have you taken in patterns, taken in standards, taken in shape, mold, 
stars. Have you followed the path that is not good? God says it can be changed. You can experience a great transformation if only you can change the state of your mind. Beauty doesn't come out of beauty. Beauty comes out of ashes, which means the state of ash was what it conformed to when fire worked upon a matter. The matter took upon itself another form which was similar to that which the fire wanted it to become. But the Bible says God did not allow the ash to remain like that. He transforms it from ash into beauty. Which means he changes it. He makes it go away from the path of ash to the path of beauty. It therefore means you too can change. Your change can take place. Your nature can change. Your personality can change. Your attitude can change. Your life can change. Your financial situation can change. Your marriage can change. Your business can change. Everything on the external can change if you will change the state of your mind. One change leads to another change. That's what the Lord is saying. If you apply a change in your mind, it will have resultant effect in the change of your attitude, personality, nature, and character. And more so, it will change your business. It will change your feelings. It will change your family. It's all about the change. And when I talk about transformation, which is also transmutation, it's nothing but metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is nothing but the change that takes place when an ugly caterpillar is transformed, is changed into a beautiful butterfly. Please, never ever think that the beautiful butterfly, beautiful colored butterfly that floats as it were in the air and flies had always been like that. No. That same beautiful butterfly, colorful butterfly, floating butterfly, was once an ugly, creepy looking thing called a caterpillar. By the mercies of God, we'll look into that tomorrow. If the caterpillar can change to something beautiful, you too, not minding how ugly, how bad situations are, can change into the best of things you ever can desire. I bring you to a world of change. All in the state of the mind before it is made manifest in the physical. May the heavens smile on you. May the God of heaven keep you. Indeed, not God, but you will make this happen. God wouldn't change you. You will change you by attending deliberately to your mind. For as he thinketh, so is he. How do you think? Do you think positively or do you think negatively? Every negative thought has brought you to where you are now. You have taken in thoughts that have made you to have the form that you are in now. For there to be a change, you must renew the thoughts and renew the things in your mind. And evidently, you renew and change everything in your life. God bless you and keep you till I come your way again. Same time, tomorrow 12 on the dot. Never forget this. Every day for you will be a plus and not a minus in Jesus' mighty name. Stay tuned and fix me with me an appointment for tomorrow 12 on the dot. God bless you. Go to my YouTube channel, subscribe for free, and view all our other uploads. It will bless you. Share this video with a folk, with a friend, and it will be a blessing to them. God bless you and honor all in Jesus' name.